Remember that the goal of Black Lives Matter is to create a world free of anti-blackness where every black person has the social, economic, and political power to thrive. Today we'll focus on education, which is part of social power. Did black people get the education they needed in order to be free during Reconstruction? Before you start the independent work, I want to talk to you about HBCUs, or Historically Black Colleges and Universities. These are colleges that started during or soon after Reconstruction with the mission to educate black students. This was at a time when most education was segregated and black people were denied entry to white colleges. Most of these HBCUs that were created during Reconstruction still exist today. Their student bodies are majority black, but students of all races can attend HBCUs. This is the first graduating class at Spelman College, the first college for black women in the United States. And this is the graduating class of Howard University in 1914. Some of the graduates in this picture were the children of former slaves. A lot of black leaders and celebrities graduated from HBCUs, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the actor Chadwick Boseman, who played the Black Panther, Vice President Kamala Harris, Oprah, and Thurgood Marshall, who was the first black Supreme Court justice. Beyonce paid tribute to the music and dance culture of HBCUs in her Coachella performance and the Netflix documentary, Homecoming. It's an education of a different variety as we are schooled by the queen. Ha! Beyonce's latest production, Homecoming, turns last year's groundbreaking Coachella performance into a self-directed and produced film. This performance is largely an ode to historically black colleges and universities. And I always dreamed of going to an HBCU. I wanted a black orchestra. I wanted the steppers. I think that Beyonce saw the significance of her being the first African-American woman to headline Coachella. She's really made it clear that she has this deep abiding love for black people and black culture. Don Roberts coordinates the music for an Atlanta area school district. He assembled members of his company Drumline to perform in Beyonce's show. He was formerly the music consultant for the film Drumline. My company had a lot of credibility. They got off the plane and we landed in California. I said, okay guys, come gather around, let me tell you who you're gonna play for. And it was like, we're gonna be performing with uh, Beyonce. And it was like, ah! An HBCU grad himself, his company is made up of other HBCU musicians. They had done their homework. They had, you know, done all the research that goes into it. And we just jumped in. And I feel like, you know, if, if, you, if they were, you could say, a steak, we were the flavor, we were the hot sauce, and brought that authenticity to what she already had. From the dynamic stepping to intricate formations of the marching band, her team sought to expose America to HBCU. There are 107 across the country, including North Carolina A&T, Clark Atlanta and Florida A&M. We've never seen like HBC HBCUs presented on such a platform. She took it and ran with it and yeah. it was beautiful. Like it was just mesmerizing. I would say Beyonce represents black girls. They say that Beyonce let the world know what they've always known about schools like theirs. One, two, ready, hey! I believe that HBCUs are still relevant at the time right now because they provide a safe space for black people or young black youth to literally just grow into themselves. They just give us a, a, a safe space to excel and not have to worry about our race first and foremost when moving throughout the world. This is why HBCUs were so important because they were formed and opened their doors for those who were sons and daughters of slaves to become educated. Today's assignment is to complete all of Lesson 3 in the new Google Doc, Reconstruction Part 2. That's it for me. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow.